Okay, so we've just met ionic compounds and now they expect us to do some stuff with them. Um, I am going to do all the versions of these where we're filling in a formula first, so I'm going to do the ones where the English name is given. I'll do that one, that one, that one, silver sulfide and beryllium bromide, and then we'll figure out the ones going in the other direction because there's a different procedure for each. And it involves some math and it involves your periodic table. If you don't have this right by your elbow when you're doing chemistry, you're doing it wrong, so go grab one. And let's see what we can do with these. They start us off here with calcium chloride, and we need to know what ions calcium and chloride are before, we're, before this happens. We're going to need to do a little bit of, a very small amount of math. So if we look up calcium on our periodic table, it's right here, it's element number 20, and it doesn't show well on the screen, but on your book I'm sure you can see that calcium's charges are plus 2. So a calcium ion has a charge of plus 2. You write it Ca2 plus because chemists like to put the charge on the end. After that we have chloride, as in chlorine, for our other ion, and chlorine is over here, it's element 17, and its charge is minus 1. You may have written that in in the previous section. So we have calcium ions with a charge of plus 2 and chlorine ions with a charge of minus 1, which my bad, I should write 1 minus, or just Cl minus. Now, the bedrock rule for ionic compounds is the amounts of charge, positive and negative, must always match. So this thing is no good the way it is right now, with plus 2 charge from the calcium and only minus 1 from the chlorine. We need equal amounts of positive or negative, or this compound will not hold together. The way we fix that is we need two chlorines to gang up on a single calcium. If we do this, now we have a single calcium, charge of plus two, two chlorines, minus one charge each for a total of minus two, and now this thing will balance out. And that means our formula should contain a single calcium and two chlorines, which we write C A C L. So these are charges that we're talking about, and we had to double the amount of chlorine to get the charges even. This is the number of atoms. This says a calcium atom and chlorine atoms, two of those. So the formula for calcium chloride is CaCl2. Let's do that several more times. I won't do them all that slow, but the first couple I want you to get settled. Lithium nitride. If you go to the table, here's lithium. It's element number three, and its charge is plus one. So, L, I, plus, and nitride, as in nitrogen, is our other member. Nitrogen is right here, and its charge is minus 3. So, we have lithiums plus 1, nitrogens minus 3. Clearly, we don't have balanced charges right now. We have plus 1 from the lithium, minus 3 from the nitrogen. We need those numbers to be the same. And to fix that, we simply triple the amount of lithium. This thing will work out if we have... Li plus. If we have three lithium atoms ganging up on a single nitrogen, then these will bring a total of plus 3 charge, one each. This will bring minus 3 charge, and that's what we need, plus 3 and minus 3 equal amounts. And our formula will be three lithium atoms, Li3, and a single nitrogen. Aluminum oxide, or aluminium oxide if you're British. Let's see what we get from that. Aluminum is element number 13 right here, and its charge is plus three. A L3 plus, and oxide comes from oxygen, and its charge right there is minus 2. If you don't have that number in the book, please go back to the unit on the atoms in the periodic table. There's a video there where I talk through extra information that you should have on your periodic table. You definitely will want those charges if you're just getting used to this. So oxides minus two each. Now, 
this one is a little more complex. I can't just double the amount of oxygen. That would be too much. I can't one and a half the amount of oxygen to get these to match. What's happening here, if, if you've taken math lately, you'll remember common multiples or common denominators. That's the issue we're having here. We need to find what's a number that we can make using threes and also using twos. And of course, the answer is six. We're going to double the amount of aluminum. Now we have plus six charge from that. And if we triple the amount of oxygen, da, 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 now we have minus six charge from that, and now we're good. This is what I mean by matching amounts of charge. We need the same amount of positive and of negative. And that means our formula is going to be two aluminum atoms, A, L, two, and three oxygen atoms. There's a bit of a cheat people use sometimes where they take the numbers on these atoms and they, they say just cross them over. They'll say if this is aluminum 3 plus and this is oxygen 2 minus, they will say take this 3, put it under the oxygen, take this 2, put it under the aluminum. Al2O3 is your formula. There are some flaws with that. I grudgingly admit that it works for this example, but there are some places where that can throw you off. So I would rather you didn't get used to that unless you know what the flaw is and how to fix it. But if you're using that to check your answers, uh, okay, I'll, I'll grit my teeth. And But uh, if you get a chance when you're practicing these, talk to somebody about the crossover method and ask them to show you what the trap is because if you know that it's coming, you might at least avoid falling into it. I would rather you did it by working out this way and finding equal amounts of positive and negative charge. If you do that for a couple of days, you'll be so, it'll get so easy that you won't even think about it anymore. Silver sulfide is our next thing down here. I'll start doing these a little bit faster. The charge on silver, silver is element 47, I think, and its symbol is AG. Yeah. Its charge is plus one. Sulfide ions are minus two. So these don't match. We need twice as much silver. A, G, two, S. Because if you have two silver atoms, that's plus two charge, minus two from the sulfide. That's balanced. That's what we need. Beryllium bromide. Beryllium's element number four right here, and its charge is plus two. And bromide is over here, its charge is minus one. So here we are talking about beryllium like that, bromide like that. Are those charges matched? Sadly, no. We have plus two from the beryllium, minus one from the bromide. We need another bromide. So our formula is going to be a single beryllium atom and two bromide atoms, which will look like B, E, B, R. Fair enough. Now, going the other way, life is substantially easier because they've d they've done all the math for us, and there's no math involved in naming an ionic compound. You're, all you are doing with something like K2S is you're saying the name of the first element, the name of the second element, and you're changing the ending to ide. And this is lovely. You get to completely ignore the numbers. You don't care if this is K2S or K11S. It makes no difference at all to the name. So looking at this first one with the KS, K is potassium. Potassium. S is sulfur, but we change the ending to sulfide. And that's it. You don't even mention these numbers. If somebody else reads this, they have to go through all this math that we were just dealing with to figure out K2S, but if you're going from the formula to the English name, life is very easy. This one, GA3AS2. This is gallium. This is arsenic. So, gallium. And you start writing arsenic, but instead you change the ending to ide. 
gallium arsenide. I didn't even look at the 3 and the 2, I don't care. HF, H is hydrogen. Hydrogen. F is fluorine, careful on the spelling. Fluor. And instead of writing fluorine, I'm going to write fluoride. Let me just give you a quick mini rant about that because you will burn if you get it wrong on an exam. F-L-O-U-R is flour. That's milled grain that you use to make cake and cookies. F-L-U-O-R is a corrosive poisonous gas. Not the same thing, not spelled the same. Please be careful. Okay, enough about that. Uh, two more of these. Na3N. Na is sodium. N is nitrogen, but remember what we're doing? Instead of nitrogen, actually I don't even need the O there. It's not even nitroide, it's nitride. Nitride. Sodium nitride. Don't care about the three, it doesn't matter when you're doing these names. And finally, SC is scandium. And SE is selenium. But when you change the ending, you get selenide. So scandium selenide for that. And again, I don't need to know about the two or the three. If somebody gives me scandium selenide, then I would have to look up... Here, I'll do this fast just as a review. If somebody gave me scandium selenide, I would have to go to the table and find scandium and say, okay, scandium's a plus three. S C three plus and then I'd have to look up selenium from the selenide. Selenium is right here, its charge is minus two. S E two minus. And then we'd have to do that common denominator thing. We'd say, okay, three and two both go into six, so I will double the amount of scandium. That's why we got S C two. And I will triple the amount of selenium, and that's how you got S E three. So it's hard work going from English to formula with ionic compounds, but it's completely easy going formula to English, so enjoy that.